All right, today we're gonna to talk about the Mezcal brand Del Maguey. It's one of the biggest ones out there. It's got a ton of variety. The bottles are very accessible. We're gonna go through some of their lower end stuff, look at some of their higher end stuff, and some in the middle. So Del Maguey was the first big brand to bring Mezcal into the United States, I believe in the late 90s, early 2000s. It was a guy named Ron Cooper who started it. He traveled down to Mexico, learned about Mezcal, and then brought it stateside. So Del Maguey has been plugging along for about 25 years. They got a lot of bottles, a lot of expressions. Let's get into some of them. First one we're gonna go over, it's their flagship mezcal. You can see it everywhere. It's probably one of the most readily available mezcals in the market, Del Maguey Vita. Some bartenders I've talked to like Vita to make into cocktails, but I'm a sipper and I can tell you this, I'm not a fan. When you're sipping this on its own, it does have a lot of smoke. And of course, mezcal has smoke to it, but this is the wrong kind of smoke. This is more like, is very metallic, very, to, in my opinion, very muffler-like, but I'm not here to slag Del Maguey as a brand in a hole. I figured I'd start with the bad news and it gets way better from here. And there's immediate good news. There is a second Vida, the Vida de Muertos, and this is 45% ABV. And why I like this Vida de Muertos way more is it's higher in proof and that extra 3% going from 42% to 45% is an absolute game changer. It's not overwhelmed by those rough, metallic, bitter notes that are in regular Vita, the De Muertos. It is fruitier, it's got more citrus notes to it, just an overall better flavor profile. You're gonna spend maybe five or 10 bucks more for the Vita De Muertos, and you do that 10 times out of 10. And moving on to the next bottle, we have the San Luis Del Rio. It's an Espadine, they're all made in the same Village, San Luis del Rio, and this is a step up in APV, 47%. And like I said before, the jump from Vita to Vita de Muertos, huge boost in flavor. You also see a similar jump in flavor from the de Muertos to the San Luis del Rio. It is tastier, but overall what hurts this is value. I don't think the extra roughly $30 you're gonna spend to go from here to here is worth it all that much. The San Luis del Rio, uh, at its price point, this is more of their uh, mid-range line. So the next mid-range one up is the Santo Domingo Albaradas. So this is 48%, it's an Espadine Mezcal. Flavor-wise, this is pretty decent. Uh, I think I picked it up in the high, high 60s, low 70s dollar price point. Um, not bad at that price point, but I think uh, if you're gonna spend that much, you might be able to do a little bit better. Which brings me to my favorite Del Maguey Mezcal in the mid-range and I think one of the best all-round mezcals out there is the Del Maguey Chichicapa. This is an Espadín Mezcal, 48%, but it's very accessible. This does have a smokier profile to it, but it is quality smoke. It's like a high-end cigar tobacco and the fruity notes in here are awesome. It even has some, I pick up some nice, little bit of chocolatey notes, uh, some espresso bean to go around with a general fruitiness. And yeah, I am a big fan of the Chichicaba. And now for the top shelf options, these bottles are gonna run about $100 or more. So some of the top shelf ones I have, uh, we got first one here is the Tobasiche, uh, made with an Agave Karwinski. This Tobasiche, it's got a lot of nice floral notes, some earthiness to it, uh, really nice and sweet. Really good top shelf option. Another higher end Del Maguey I have is the Wild Habali. Habalis are usually pretty sought after on the upper end of Mezcal. They taste awesome, but one of the main reasons is they're hard to work with. What happens is the, the agave really tends to foam, whether it be in the fermentation and even the distillation. So they have to spend a lot more care to it. it takes more time to get the mezcal in the end. But I really like Del Maguey's Habili. To me, it's just as good as any of the other great Habilis that are out in the market. But I'm gonna finish up strong. This is one of my favorite top shelf mezcals in general, the Del Maguey San Pablo a Mile Tepec. So these first seven mezcals, I believe are all made in the state of Oaxaca. This San Pablo, just north of Oaxaca, the state of Puebla. Earlier batches of the San Pablo were made with 100% papalote and agave potatorum. Newer batches are still mostly papalote, but it does have some pizora in it, which is an agave mamorata, the same family as a tepestate. I'm gonna give the San Pablo a quick try here. Wow. 
This is tropical fruit galore, especially papaya. Some nice real leathery notes in there. A beautiful bit of cream in there. And man, a high quality cigar tobacco finish. This stuff is fantastic. So to quickly summarize, if you're looking at the Del Maguey brand, you're looking for one of the lower end options, Vita de Muertos, that's your answer. If you're looking for a mid-range option, the Del Maguey Chichicapa, one of the best mid-range mezcals in the entire market, in my opinion. And if you want to pony up, go into sort of the top shelf range, the San Pablo Amayal Tepec. If you can find it, it is awesome. One of my favorite top shelf mezcals out there. So that's it for me today. It's been awesome talking to you about the Del Maguey brand. If you're a fan of this mezcal related content, hit me up with a like and a subscribe. But I'm gonna salute off with the Del Maguey Vida de Muertos. In my opinion, the best value option that Del Maguey has in their line. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks a lot, salute.